All right, guys, welcome to Real Estate School. This is a free training and it's going to be focused all about cold calling on steroids and how we can use cold calling to approach a ton of sellers and get them on the phone. How so easy, we close fast and any time that works for you. Your house don't need it, we'll throw cash and hit so fast, don't know what to do. All right, guys, welcome to Real Estate School. This is a free training and it's going to be focused all about cold calling on steroids and how we can use cold calling to approach a ton of sellers and get them on the phone. All right. That's the whole purpose of cold calling. It's to get sellers on the phone. Now understand this is a type of marketing that has a cold outreach. So you got to have thick skin in this business. And if you decide that you want to do cold calling, First and foremost, I want to lead with that. You are going to get hung up on. You are going to get told no. People will get mad at you sometimes. You might get cursed at. If you are not okay with this type of you know, activity and this type of behavior from people, maybe cold calling isn't for you. But if you have thick skin and you're willing to cold call and you're okay with that, check this out. The great thing about cold calling is it typically has some of the highest return on our investment because it's really an investment in time, not in money. So for the amount of, of dollars that come out of pocket to generate the leads, skip trace the leads, then call those leads or calling them on steroids with an auto dialer, like I'm going to demo today, um, is a more time intensive type of marketing versus a cost. There still will be a little bit, but you can stretch a few dollars a long way with this type of marketing method. Okay. Um, so earlier in the week, I did a training over on batch leads and that batch leads training was on how to pull leads. And in fact, in let's just go back to my list as an example here, we can go to filter. And last week when I did actually, they're going to be in my script trace area. Where's it at? Here it is. Uh, just a couple of days ago, right? About a week ago, give or take. We pulled some vacants in my zip code, and we also pulled some inherited properties in my zip code. And what I did is I also have Batch Dialer, which is a multi-line dialer tool. And I created those exact same campaigns, and I pushed them over. Now, I, I, I obviously, I've been using Batch Dialer for a long time, so I have a lot of additional campaigns in here, as you can see, okay? Um, so again, you are going to need to get your own leads and you're going to need to get them into batch or into an auto dialer in order to use a cold calling auto dialer on steroids, right? You're going to need to do that. I recommend batch leads for leads, skip tracing data comps. You can drive for dollars with it, pull up, you know, comps. Like I mentioned, you can see what they owe. There's just so many awesome benefits of using batch leads, but batch leads isn't an auto dialer. You might be able to one-off dial in there with your click to call. And you can, of course, text and send mail. You can do all this stuff in there, but trying to auto dial and reach hundreds of people in an hour um, isn't something that batch leads does, but batch dialer does do that. All right. So batch dialer is awesome. Now I've used a couple other dialers in the past, uh, Mojo as an example, and you know, I just prefer batch dialer. I think it's got better quality and it's just a good product. Um, I'll put a link down below this video for you guys. If you want to test it out, feel free. You can get a seven day free trial um, as well as out unlimited cold calling, you know, for those seven days with a number that I believe that you get included with that seven day free trial. So batch dialer is what I use and what I love to use. Okay. Again, I get my leads over here in batch leads. I'll also link to that, you know, towards the end of this training here. Uh, we got a good group on today, which is great. So after the training, we will open it up for Q and A. So guys appreciate you being here and hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two. If you have questions while I'm presenting, uh, please don't interrupt, but feel free to use the chat feature. Again, all of these are going to be here on zoom. We'll also record these. So of course, use the chat feature if you guys have some questions in the meantime. Let's go ahead and jump on in. So first and foremost, you know, when we are cold calling sellers, uh, I want to talk about a couple of things real quick before we jump into the dialer and, and whatnot. But when we are cold calling sellers, like I mentioned, it's all about just getting property owners on the phone. It's all about 
marketing. Marketing is nothing more than a fancy word for getting sellers on the phone. It doesn't matter what type of marketing you're doing. You could be doing radio ads or ad words or direct mail, right? At the end of the day, you're putting a message in front of them and hoping that they're going to call you or go to your website and fill out a form. If they call you, all roads lead to a phone call. If they go to your website and they fill out a form, you're going to get an email. So you're still going to have to call them. If you're texting, I've used texting to buy dozens and dozens of houses, but I'm not just texting. And that's the end of the game. I'm texting to open up a conversation. And then once I have somebody on the other end of that conversation, that's interested, I'm going to set up a call. So the point I want to make here, folks, is that all roads of marketing, radio ads, websites, Bandit signs, direct mail, cold calling and texting, essentially all roads lead to phone calls. So if you can lead with a phone call, you're going to eliminate a lot of these other activities often. Again, it's going to take time, right? But the cool thing about cold calling is, is that you can also outsource this with virtual assistants. And that's the beautiful thing about it. I often have my virtual assistants cold call when they have downtime. So they can essentially do a lot of these activities for you. But if you are new and you don't have the resources to hire a VA, you can do this yourself. It's very, very, very simple. I have a calling script that I'm gonna share with you all in just a second. But again, all marketing roads lead to a phone call. So this can be a very, very, great place to start. And it's going to be a more, really cost-effective place to start as well. So when we are calling, we are going to use an opener. Let me go back to my screen share here. Here we go. Call script. And the opener is going to be something very, very simple. Hello, I'm looking for John. Is And you're going to say, this is your first name. So I'm going to say, this is David. I know this call is out of the blue. But I was calling about a property I believe you own over on 123 Maple Street. I just wanted to see if you would consider an offer on the property. And if you want to modify it, modify it. And in fact, I have an entire script that I'm going to share with you all that my team sometimes uses. But before we even go into all those little minute things and go into the dialer and actually make a few phone calls today, um, I just want to preference this before we jump on in here. And I'm going to actually stop my screen share just for a second. Cold calling scripts can be great. The only problem with a script, though, is you are going to sound scripted no matter what, in my opinion. So one of the things that I teach all of the people that I work with or work for me or my virtual assistants or any of my team members is use a script for a day or two. After that, you're going to know everything on it. And it's going to give you the freedom and the flexibility to pivot much simpler. To where if they ask a question or they go off the script that you don't have a delay and you can keep that conversation going, you are going to sound more natural. So essentially, the best cold calling scripts, in my opinion, are the ones that just use bullet points and you can kind of bounce around. Obviously, there's a way to open and obviously there's a way to close. The way to close is, is when can we meet at the property, right? The way to open is, hey, I'm Dave or I'm Richard or I'm Kenneth, right? and I'm an investor looking to buy some more properties in the neighborhood. Do you have interest in selling it? Or are you the owner? First and foremost, great. We've established that. Now, do you have interest in selling it? That's it. Everything in the middle is essentially you just making a friend and trying to get an appointment, but also learning about the property. And let's not also forget learning about their motivation. What's their motivation? Are they in need of selling properties? I don't necessarily care if somebody wants to sell a property. Hell, I want to sell every one of my properties if I can get 140% of their true value, right? I'm really looking for people that need to sell, right? Individuals that are willing to sell that property at a discount in exchange for the convenience. And that's one of the things that we also want to explain to these individuals when we're on the phone, that we can make the process simple for them, right? We can buy it as is, we can pay cash, we can close fast. All right. So with that being said, I think that's a great place to start. That's the call opener. Now, when you do this and you say this or a variation of this, because again, you may not be using this script after a day or two, or maybe even after an hour or two, you're going to know how to open the call. You're going to typically get six types of responses. You might get something else, but like, you know, 90% of the time, you're going to definitely most likely 
get one of these six types right here, okay? Number one, yes. Okay, great. Well, you can expand on that, right? You can say, okay, great. You know, we purchased some properties in the area cash, right? Already, we'd love to buy yours. We pay all the closing costs. There's no real estate commissions, okay? And the best part is we buy them completely as this. You don't have to do anything to the property, all right? If they say yes, how much are you offering, okay? You can say, well, it looks like some of the other homes in the area have sold for this, and you can pull up Zillow on their property in real time, right? And then you can essentially start asking them questions, which we're going to get to up here, about the property so you can start justifying or figuring out the cost of repairs so you can then make them an offer. But essentially, it's going to be impossible to make somebody an offer without learning a little bit about the property, right? So they may say yes, maybe in the future. And you're going to say, great. Anytime that somebody's willing to talk to you, you got to be excited. You got to say, great. Thank you so much. You know, should I call you back in a month? Should I call you back in a week? You know, I'm sorry. This would be for, yes, maybe in the future. We have moved along here, right? So figure out what the future to them is. Is that a week? Is it a month? Is it six months? And then record that in your CRM or whatever tool you are using. If they say no, then just say, hey, I completely understand. This call is out of the blue. Do you happen to have any other properties that you would consider selling? Because remember, I asked them about a specific property address up here in my opener, right? Maybe sometimes they may have another property that they may want to sell. So next, how, where did, not D, did you get my number, right? Well, this one is typically pretty easy. You just tell them that you have an internet provider that helps locate property owners. TruePeopleSearch.com is one that we all, all use for free. You could have, you know, LexisNexis. You could have any other software. So name the software or just say I use an internet, a, a service on the internet that I can send an address over to and it helps me locate a property owner. And if they have a phone number, they send it back to me. I'm just trying to reach out to you about a property. By the way, folks, when I'm cold calling, I'm not selling anything. All right. I'm not selling anything. Now, in theory, you could cold call to sell a deal. And in that rate, you are selling something. It's a deal, but you're going to be cold calling investors, not motivated sellers. All right. Keep that in mind. And then last but not least, and this, these two kind of go hand in hand. Who are you and how'd you get my number, right? Well, when they say, who are you? You literally just say, hey, I'm a local real estate buyer looking to do some, some remodels or buy some rental properties in the area. That's it. So incredibly simple. And then from there, you're going to close the call. That may be hanging up if you get hung up on. That's closing it down, right? If you do build rapport and make a friend with them, your goal would be to set an appointment or follow up whenever it's appropriate. All right. So that's the opening of the call. Building rapport is going to be inside of here and hopefully done within the first three of these, maybe even after you overcome the objections of five and six. If they say no, they're typically not interested, move on. Don't waste your time. Don't waste their time. But we're going to close the call by setting an appointment or set a follow up day, date, and time on your end. This is typically going to be done inside of your CRM. So here's a sheet that I often share with my cold callers when I bring them on. And again, this is not something that I have them keep on their desk after a day or two, because they're going to learn all of the things that we need to know and or get from them in order to build rapport. And in fact, I probably have 20 versions of this one that I give to certain people that I'll tweak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share in the training replay of this call, the PDF of this, but also the Word doc. So if you guys want to modify it or change it, you can. And I'll even share a couple additional call scripts that I've gathered from friends and uh, fellow investors and put them in there so you guys can take your pick of what works best for you. But again, here's a very, very simple example. So hi, my name is David with We Buy STL Homes or you could say how sold easy, right? It doesn't really matter. You're going to pick your company. My company is called House Sold Easy. 
We had a website at one point called We Buy STL. I don't even think I have that site anymore. We are looking for three and four bedroom homes in your neighborhood. And I was wondering, who do you know that is looking to move out in your area? Right? That could be one way to approach it. Or I like the more direct approach like we talked about down here. And again, I'm going to modify this as we go. Because again, I have like 30 different variations of this. All right. So we're going to actually just use this one. Hi, I'm looking for seller's name. This is who I am. I just wanted to see if you consider an offer on your property. Right. Well, they're going to answer again. They're going to answer with one of these six typical responses. All right. If you get through the no's and the yes, maybe in the futures and set up a time to call those folks back and maybe even build a little rapport. Great. All right. If they answer yes, yes, how much are you offering? Who are you? Where'd you get my number? How did you contact me? Any of these get handle those objections. And then essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to jump into these items here right? Are you planning on selling the house this year? All right. And again, we have some stuff on here. I'm going to, I'm going to modify and edit this before I upload it to you guys, make it even simpler. Um, do you have your next home picked out already? All right. You don't necessarily need these little things in there. We can take those out because depending on how they answer, I don't want you guys to be scripted. That's the whole point. I want you to use the script to just kind of know what questions need to be asked or should be asked. If you get too scripted, they're going to talk about something else and you're going to get confused and you're going to sound like a fool. And that's not what I want. My goal here today is to help you all break the fear of making these cold calls, right? That's the goal, right? So don't overthink it. It's super, super important that we know that we don't want to overthink this. Making the call is going to be the hardest part, all right? Uh, what do you think it will take to get the house sold? All right. Sometimes I love to just straight up go up and ask the seller, why are you interested in selling or why do you want to sell? Or the best one is why do you need to sell? But that's assuming that they need to sell it. And they're super, super happy that you called and that you got them on the phone. Here's really, really, we're getting to the bread and butter here. Let's skip ahead. You know, tell me more about the home. Is it vacant? Is it occupied? Is it got tenants in there? How big and how, how big is the house? Beds, bath, like learn about it. How many square feet? Also, by getting the seller to tell you these things here, you are essentially building rapport with them in the background, right? The longer you can stay on the phone with them, the better, the more friendly you all will become and the more likely that they're going to invite you out to their home. And if they say that they're an investor and that they've done some rentals 20 years ago, appease them and ask them about them and learn a little bit and spend five or 10 or sometimes 30 or 40 minutes on the phone with this individual to build rapport. People are going to want to sell houses to individuals that they know, like, and trust. Pretty straightforward. Okay. So use this as an opportunity to build rapport with them. How many square foot? And a lot of times you can pull the property up on Zillow and you can just verify, Hey, I see online that this is a three bedroom, two bath, you know, approximately 1600 square foot. Does that sound right, John or Joe or Jack or whoever you're talking to? Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, great. Does it have any garages? Are they attached? Do they detach? Just take notes. You know, how did, how long have you owned it or how did you happen to own it? Right? What kind of repairs does the property need? And if it has some stuff like this, you can check some boxes, but you don't need to ask them every little line item. Like, does it need cabinets? Does it need electrical? Because again, you're going to sound scripted. Just be friendly. Talk with them. What do you think the repair costs are going to be? Love that question. They don't often know, but it gets them thinking because when you ask that question, they often start digging into some more of these that they didn't tell you a minute ago, right? What are you asking for the house? Very important. Are we in the ballpark here or not? Is that a fixed up or an as is price? I always ask that. Always. And then I usually follow it up with, how did you come up with that price? Or can you do any better? Because often if you just say, oh, you know, I, you know, I really want to come view it, but I'm not sure I can make that work. I don't want to waste your time. Can you do any better? And usually they're going to come down five or $10,000 just by making one more question appropriate, right? So you're just, you're, you're essentially selecting them to see if they're truly in need or if they're wanting to sell. How soon do you want to sell it? Is there a mortgage? They may or may not tell you. 
Is there a balance? They may or may not tell you. Luckily, we have batch leads and we can go and we can type any property in and we can essentially find out what they owe. We can find out the square footage of the property. Here's one Mike and I just bought earlier this week on Spencer. And it essentially is going to tell us everything we need to know. Two bedroom, one bath, built in 1936, 768 square foot, so on, so forth. I can pull that up while I'm talking to the seller. Okay. I'm going to clean this up for you guys. But again, don't overcomplicate it. Here's the, the main nuts and bolts. Open the call. See if they own the property. So we have to qualify them as being the right person. If they're not, ask them if they know the owner or if they have a house they want to sell. Then give them a second to speak, okay? I don't typically say, hello, I'm looking for John. Is this John? And then John's going to say, yes. Let me give you guys a pro tip right here. You will find yourself, if you take the approach of saying, hey, John, how are you today? And try to ask every single person you're cold calling how, how they're doing today, that you will have worse results. I'm not saying that you shouldn't ask them how they're doing or care, but I would highly encourage you to shift that to the middle of the call or even the end of the call versus the beginning of the call. Reason being, guys and girls, you all get cold called all the time already, most likely. I do. I get one or two a day from somebody selling me something. The difference is I'm not selling something to somebody. I'm trying to connect with them about a property they own to see if they want to sell it. But when I get those phone calls and they say, hey, this is Tim with ABC Solutions. How are you today, Dave? Click. That's what I do because they sound like a salesperson. So again, I'm not saying don't take the, the, the approach of being kind and, and asking, but I can tell you that if you eliminate the how are you today, you're going to have 200% better success. How do I do it? Hello, I'm looking for John. Or I might not even ask the question. I might just say, hey, I'm, my, my name is David with Household Easy. I'm trying to find John, the owner of 123 Maple. I'm not even looking at a script, folks. Just this is it. It's not rocket science. And then they're going to say, hey, this is John. I own 123 Maple Street. Or I don't know that street. And if they don't know, I'm going to say, oh, cool. Sorry, man, I got the wrong number. You don't have any houses you're looking to sell. I'm an investor. If he does own it, then instead of, again, instead of saying, hey, John, how are you today? He's going to be like, oh, what's this guy trying to sell me? Instead, I'm going to say, great, John, hey. I buy houses in the neighborhood, man. You have any interest in selling this one? He's going to say yes. He's going to say no. He's going to say maybe. He's going to say how did you get my information? He's going to say who are you? Or he's going to say what's your offer? Those are the six things they're going to typically say. Those six things typically happen 90 to 95% of the time. They may have something else that they say, but so what? Again, that's why you don't necessarily need a script to follow because if it's something off the script, you're going to get confused. You're going to pause. They're going to sense that. You all get colds called. The ones that you get through, think about it. How do they do it? They're not typically trying to sell you something right away. And they're not typically asking you how you're doing. They're getting your interest level up. And then you can build on that. So after a minute or two, ask them how they're doing today. And if they have time to talk to you right now. And if they don't, figure out a good time to follow up with them. Here's the beautiful thing about cold calling. You can utilize this to call motivated sellers. You can utilize it to connect with real estate agents and brokers and other tradespeople to build relationships and network and, and get leads from these individuals by making friends. You can also use cold calling to go out into um, sell your deals by pulling lists of cash buyers, which we can easily go do in batch as well. I love it. All right, guys, I want to give you guys a quick tour of batch leads today as well. I'm glad that we jumped into that. So a second ago, I told you guys, you can get a free trial. I'm going to drop that link down below this video. Here's batch leads is what it looks like on the inside. Okay. And I can choose different campaigns. You can see, we sometimes reach out to agents. We reach out to deceased homeowners. These two, I just pulled last week. And uh, there's not a ton of leads in there, but I can demo these and show you guys how this works. Okay. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, which campaign am I in? I need to go back to my campaigns. Let's go to no active agent. Oh, that's because there's nobody in there. Let's do the vacants. I'm going to see if I can't reach some of these vacants. Oh, I don't want to make it inactive. I want to click over here. 
And I want to go to available. And it looks like we're going to be hitting all of these. So we can just turn them off like this here. And down in the bottom, you can see oh, which ones I want to do here. This is the prep work. I want to just call the vacants. Let's go ahead and start calling the vacants. So just like that, I have myself a dialer. And you're going to see that it's going to start auto dialing. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to go to configuration here. Cell phone ringtone, play connected sound. All right. And then, you know what? I need to do something really quick here, guys. I was at an appointment before this training, so I wasn't fully prepared. I need to go and edit this campaign really quick. And here's this is how you do it, essentially, when you create a campaign. You can choose if you want to do a single line dialer. Hello, is this Sally? Hello, I'm looking for Sally. It, it's dialing in the background here. I wasn't even prepared, which is amazing. Once you have a call that ends, you can then select what's happening. I don't know what happened with that. So I'm going to select abandon. But in the background here, you can see there's three lines dialing. And that's what we can essentially do when we go over. Hey, is this Alan? Still there to disconnect. Some, I missed it. So that was their answering machine. And I have a selection for that answer machine. I can even take a note here. Did not leave a voicemail. If I want to leave voicemails, I can't. I don't recommend ring, ringless voicemails or pre-recorded ones. If you're going to leave a voicemail, especially on a cell phone, always try to do it live. And it's going to sound more personal too. Hey, it's Tuesday, April 11th at 2.30, trying to reach you, right? It's going to sound much more. So I got three, three calls going So if I wanted to leave a message, I could just do it right here. So check this out. I got James's information. Here's his street. The tone. Please record your message. My caller ID is at the bottom. I got a bunch of different numbers. For more options. Hey, James, this is David Dodge over at Household Easy Properties. I was calling today about 18 Williamsburg Estates here in 63131. I live in 63131. I'm just looking to buy another property in my neighborhood. Uh, give me a call if you have any interest in selling that property, man. I'd love to talk with you. 314-701-8590. Thanks, James. And that's it. Left a voicemail. Left a voicemail. Guys, this is going fast. I'm trying to edit the campaign and people are, are the phone's dialing in the background. So this campaign right now is set to three numbers. And whenever it detects an answering machine, six, three, six, five. it's going to give me the ability to leave a message or I can skip it. You can even set up the settings to go about um, auto. Hello? That's probably an answer machine. We're going to go to answer machine. You can set it to where once it gets to an answer machine, it doesn't give you the ability to leave a voicemail and it just skips it and goes to the next one. And if you just want to focus on getting people on the phone versus leaving voicemails, that's a setting you can set. I can't even get to the settings menu because it's dialing and I don't want to cancel the dialing because I want to get somebody on the phone to show you guys this system. But obviously you can see already, I have it set to three dials simultaneously. So what it essentially is doing is, is trying very hard to get somebody. Hey, Thomas, my name is David with Household Easy Properties. I'm calling about 11811 Lillian over in De Pere. I live in De Pere right off a of boat, but I'm just looking for uh, another property to buy. My wife and I are actually. Give me a call back if you have any interest in selling that property. I'd love to talk with you. If you're not interested, you can disregard this message. Uh, but again, I'd love to talk with you if you do have some interest in selling that property. My name is David. I'm with Household Easy Properties. And my number is 314-701-8380. Thank you, Thomas. Boom. Left him a voicemail. Make a note. Left a voicemail because I can go back and I can look at these notes later, all right? Whenever I'm on a call, it's going to essentially end the other messages here, all right? And it's going to pause the, the, the new dialing, right? If I answer with, let's say, Nadia, but it's got two other people going here, it's going to go to a message that I've already pre-recorded, 
did not leave voicemail. And that message sounds like this. Hey, this is Dave. Hello. Hey, I'm having trouble hearing you. Let me call you right back. Hey, is this James? Hey, I'm looking for James. Is this James? Could have been a dead number or abandoned. So you have all these options here. But the great thing is, let's go ahead and pause this for a second. We can actually put this on break just for a second so I can take a, take a break here because this thing is going to go, go, go. That's the point of it. It's going to put you on the phone with somebody. It's going to allow you to go leave 50, 100 voicemails in an hour or two so you can start getting callbacks from people. All right, it's putting in the effort here. But again, this thing was rapid fire dialing as you just saw, and it looks like it still is because it hasn't connected with my break yet. Let's see if we get any of these other three. You might. Hopefully we get somebody. That's the goal. That's always the goal. Those two are stopped. Probably hit a voicemail. And that one stopped too. So let's go back and do what I was trying to do a minute ago. I wanted to go into the campaigns and show you all something here real quick. If you go into the campaign, whichever one you want, all right, and agents, um, I've actually made that one in and after because I just want to call motivated sellers on this training here. But let's say I go to edit the campaign. I can choose between a preview dial and a predictive dial. The preview dialer is one off and it's essentially going to show the details of the call while it's dialing. It's a little bit slower, but it'll help you be more prepared. All right. Because you're going to know about it versus it just pop up like it did for me. You know, I can usually just see the name and the address and roll with it. If you don't want to go that fast, you can do the preview dial. The predictive dialer will let you go up to 10 at once. I've never thought it was really useful to be above three or four max, three ideally, maybe even just two. Now, keep in mind that there is going to be a difference in uh, pricing for a single line dialer versus a multi-line dialer. All right, the single line dialer is basically just the preview dialer. The multi-line dialer is going to be a little bit more expensive, but again, it gives you the ability, folks, to raise that up. So Dennis is one of my main virtual assistants. I got him in here and I'm actually logged into his account. Um, you can batch your phone numbers. You can create contact lists. And again, I'm just managing one campaign. I've labeled the campaign. I have the results that pop up as you all saw once the call ends so I can classify it. And essentially after a while, I can go back and filter all my callbacks from a day or two's time. And I can then start calling those people back because I told them I would. Right. If you want to have a script, you can add your script. There's a default script in here. This is one that I added in here and I'll share it with you. I'll make sure to add it down below. But again, this one's even simpler. Hello, I'm looking for a first name. This is your name. I know this call is out of the blue, but I was calling about a property I believe you own. Hey, it's the same script. Guys, no surprise. There's nothing to it. The script is the, is the least thing you need to be worried about, folks. I promise you that. It's getting people on the phone that matters. And if you use a multi-line dialer, you can do it on steroids. All right. Um, I just want to see if you consider an offer on your property. If yes, how much will you give me? Answer. Well, we'll purchase the property cash. We'll pay all the closing costs. There's no commissions. Or, okay, great. My partner runs all the numbers. This is something I often say all the time. Okay, great. My partner owns all the numbers and the condition of the home unit is really important. You know, have you done any major repairs? I want to learn about the property before I just go make an offer to somebody. If they don't have time and they're rude and they say, make an offer, then I literally go into Zillow and I find the property address. It's like this one, as an example, this one I just flipped and I'll take that number and I'll cut it in half. So what's half of 270? That's about what, 190? I'll say, hey, I'm typically buying homes in the neighborhood for like 180, 190. But these homes need a lot of work. If yours need, doesn't need any work at all, then I can pay you much more than that. And then I'll immediately jump right back to where I was, folks, right here. You know, the condition really matters. Have you done any major remodeling to the kitchen or the bathroom or to anything in the home in the last five years? Why is that so important? Well, five years goes by pretty quick. But if it's got a new roof, that's still a new roof. If it's got a new kitchen five years ago, that kitchen's probably got some nicks and dings and some could use a little love, but it probably doesn't need to be replaced if it's only five years old. If it's 12 years old or 18 years old, especially the roof, 20 years old, guys, it needs a new roof. 
So it's going to help you understand what the, the true condition of the property is. If they answer no, I can say I completely understand. So during the dialer, you can actually have it pop up a script, which I didn't demo that yet, but that's an option. Okay, so the advanced configuration, where is the, I'm trying to find, let me see if I can locate it. They change stuff on me. There's a place in here. Oh, you know what? Dennis doesn't have the ability to do that because he's an agent. So look, if I switch profiles, Nope, that ain't it either. Well, in the in the admin of the uh, of the software, when you're setting up a campaign, you can then select how many numbers. It won't let me do it because I'm logged into Dennis's and I'm the owner of the account. He's an agent. Um, but essentially, you can have as many agents as you want. It can be the same person. It can be different person. Um, the reason that this matters is because once you're in to the area, you can then see who's doing the calling. You can have reports of numbers and heat maps and floor maps and agent maps. It's all pretty, pretty straightforward, which I love. Another thing I really like is you can have one, two, three, five numbers. I had one up uh, just recently. I just added these two this morning and you can group them. All the numbers that get called back, they're going to actually go to a phone number. So this number right here is essentially just a voicemail box that I get an email from. So when I'm doing my outbound calling, I'm not trying to answer inbound either, folks. That's another really, really good pro tip for today's training. When you are doing your outbound outreach, block it. Don't answer calls during that time. Even on your cell phone, turn it off. If it's for 30 minutes or for three hours and 30 minutes, turn it off. Focus on your outbound. And then at the end, you can go and you can see if you had any missed calls or any voicemails from those calling efforts. So when you're trying to play ping pong with two paddles and two balls, you're not going to be good at either one of them. It's like chasing two rabbits. Just focus on the outbound for a couple hours, then see if you have any missed calls or voicemails and call those people back. But don't try to do all of it at the same time. So we batch all of our numbers into a destination. And then that destination will call. And that's just a phone number that we own that goes to a voicemail. And when we get the voicemail, it's in an email and we can go listen to it and we can track and see who called. You also have tons of different tools in here. There's a dashboard. Mine's not going to look very pretty because we haven't really been using this a whole lot lately because we've been building out some systems. But obviously I got some new numbers today and I'm looking forward to doing some more. Just today alone, we made eight calls already. We have 12 remaining in this little tiny campaign. So let's just make a few more calls here. And essentially what we can do too, it, now that we're at about 2.45, about 45 minutes in here, more than happy to open it up for Q&A for those that are here live. Um, I highly recommend using a multi-line dialer. Let's go ahead and all you got to do to turn it on. Again, you got to be in the agent seat. Let's click available. And then over here on the side, it'll start dialing. So again, I'm calling my vacants, inherited, and deceased homeowners. All three of these campaigns are live right now. And over here, you can see it's already starting to dial. Now, again, this is not the preview dial. This is the predictive. Hello? Yeah, hi. Hi, I'm looking for Mr. Gaffney. Oh, no. All right, well, my name is David, and I'm trying to locate the property owner for 2123 North Guy, or maybe I got the wrong number. Do you happen to know anything about that property? Oh, don't, never heard of that street. Oh, no. Oh, man. Well, I'm so sorry to bother you. Um, do, you do you live in St. Louis by chance? Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Sometimes people aren't going to be interested. No problem, guys. Who cares? Move on. We're going to go ahead and we're going to just say that this particular person uh, was a wrong number and they did not know about this property. So now in my system, it's going to mark that as the wrong number and it's not going to call them again or follow up. Also, when you're setting up your campaigns, you can choose if you want to call them back again, right? So unless you mark it as a successful sale or a dead number or a wrong number, it's going to add them to the queue to, to call back again. You can set that. You want to wait an hour, a day, a week, you can set, you know, lots of different things within here, which is really, really great. All right. It looks like we might be through that campaign already. Let's go back to the campaigns again. 
because I just want to touch on that. And again, it's going to be limited on what I can see over here. But if I go to my advanced configuration, I can do call score, call type. Oh, here we go. Your behavior. How many calls do you want to make to that contact today? One, two. That's what I would suggest at a max. Don't go above it. Max attempts per record. You could maybe go up to four times. But again, going above three is going to result in lower connection rates. So, you know, typically keep it around three. Simulus dials per agent. Here's how many calls I want to make at once, guys. If I wanted to take this up to 10, I could go up to 10. But that's craziness, in my opinion, right? If you really want to do that, go for it. To me, it makes more sense to, to do it around two or three, maybe four. My retry time is typically three hours. I don't think it makes sense to call somebody back 10 minutes later if they didn't answer. They're busy now. Give them a couple hours, right? You can even set the retry time to be a day if you wanted to, right? This is typically how mine looks. Two to three calls max, really only one or two, two per day. This is per day, all right? Because if this retry time is set to two hours and you have your max attempt set to 10, this, re, this max calls per day trumps it. So again, you don't want to be hitting people up too aggressively, right? You got to have some ethics when you're cold calling here, but this is prospecting. This is what we do when we prospect. So this is how mine typically looks. Two calls per day max. Max times, I'm going to be shooting them up to four, four attempts total. But my simulus dials per agent is usually going to be around two or three. And then the retry time, I typically have at three or maybe even four hours like that. But regardless, I can't try more than twice in a day, right? Something simple. Abandoned timeout is basically how, how quick it's going to reset. Uh, smart local presence, if you have a bunch of numbers, it's going to use your local numbers first. If you want to add in a lead sheet, you can. And then here's some good stuff too. You can record all the calls, which is great. And in fact, I'm so glad I thought of this, guys. Let's check this out. I have a Dropbox folder with recordings. I don't even know how many, 250 recordings that I will share with you all in this free training. And these are successful VA cold calls, cold calls done by somebody on my team. Let's listen to one. This is a six minute call, so we're not gonna listen to the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got a, a new, roof on, new roof on it. We've been... Just, 250 been, successful cold calls I'm going to share with you guys. So, and my mother was uh, in a nursing home. So we just, you know, we all, me, me and my, I got, I got another brother and a sister. And we've been kind of working on it over the last, about the last five years, actually. Uh, and, uh, you know, trying to get everything together on it. And everybody works, you know, and just, just got to do it when it got time. And we're finally getting it around. We're going to skip ahead. This is a VA doing this, guys. This isn't me. And I think it's a $5 an hour VA. So if you guys need a VA and need help with these efforts, we can help you there too. Just reach out. So this guy right here is interested in selling, right? In order for me to go about getting 250 successful cold call recordings, I probably had to dial somewhere around, I don't know, 30,000 people. It's a numbers game. Keep that in mind. In fact, let's go to the reports. Let's go to, uh, let's try campaigns. I don't know if this is going to work or not. That's not what we're looking for. Let's try agents. But let's take the agents back and let's do... Year to date isn't going to help much because we haven't done a ton. But if we do, check this out. Let's go to 2022 because we did a ton. 2022, the whole year. Oh, we don't have the data in there. That's, that's you know what? Because I'm in the wrong, I'm in the agent. I'm not in mine. But we have made... Tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of cold calls using this system. I need to log into my account. Let me try to do that real quick. And I'll show you guys the dashboard. Um, but the multi-line dialer is the way to go. You're going to reach anywhere from five to 10 times more people. And that's not at a five or 10 dials at a time, guys. That's with two or three dials at a time. Think about this. 
You're going to reach five more times more people minimum with three dialers, maybe more because you're not waiting, right? If you're going to go wait for three minutes, they might've called 25, 30 people. And one of the things in the call settings that I, we, I, we saw a second ago, but I skipped over it was um, the ability to just, if it detects an answer machine, to just hang up and it'll speed it up if you're just trying to get on the phone. I often like to leave voicemails. Now there's a, there's different types of lists that I'm going to do that on. I'm not going to typically leave voicemails on every vacant or every absentee. If you have the time, you should. I'm leaving vacants on inherited and people that have a higher likelihood of being motivated to sell. It's really all up to you. All right, I'm going to pull this up now. Here we go. I was in the wrong account because I have an administrator account. And I have another account. All right, let's try this again. I don't know if it's going to let me go back. I've been using this thing forever. Let's try it. January 1, 2022 through September 12th. Nope, still not working. No, no big deal. No big deal. But the point is simple, guys. You don't necessarily need to call in a script, even though I'm going to give you a couple. And even when you take these scripts, just learn that there's based out of, there's really just three parts, an opener, a rapport builder, and a close. And that's it. The opener is who are you and are, and, and are, and are, you, and, and are you on the other end with who you think they are and do they own a property? That's it. Don't ask them how they're doing per se, because they're going to think this is a sales call. They're going to think you're trying to sell them something. I want to spark interest. So sometimes I'll just say, hey, is this John over at 123 Maple? Pause. John's going to say, yeah, this is him. Who is this? And how'd you get my number? And I say, great. I'm Dave. I'm with Household Easy. I got your number online. I handled his objection. And I verified that he owns the house, right? So now I'm going to say, I love that neighborhood. I buy houses all over St. Louis, but I'm really trying to buy a few more in that part of town. Want to sell it? That's it. Yes, no, you're going to get those six responses, folks. Let's review real quick. You know, nine times out of 10, you're going to get these six responses right here. Yes. Yes. How much are you offering? That's basically the same question. Oh, okay, great. Awesome, man. Well, if you're available today, I'll just meet you there and give you my offer in person. Otherwise, I just need to ask you a couple questions about the property. Boom. Simple, right? Yes, maybe in the future. Awesome, John, I get it. You know, I love the neighborhood. I can't wait to buy more in there. You know, I get it. You're not interested in selling today. Thank you for taking my call, by the way. When would be a good time for me to follow up? You guys want to sell it in a year? Maybe I'll call you back in eight months. Sound like a plan? And they're going to say, yep, Dave, no problem. Because they're not going to expect me to call them back in a year, but I am going to call them back in a year. Because that's how I win deals. I'm, I'm relentless with my follow-up. They say, no, you say, great. Thanks for taking my call. Move on. How'd you get my number? I, I got your number online. How do I do anything these days? Just move past it. Don't, don't, don't pick the scab of the wound here, folks. Just, I got your number online on a website I use. It helps me connect real estate owners with, with numbers and, and emails. If you don't want me to contact you again, I won't. I'm not selling anything, guy, girl. I'm just trying to reach out to my neighbors. And I always position myself as being a neighbor. I may live six miles down the road, but we're all St. Louisans here in my city. And you guys are going to have the same mindset. So everybody's a neighbor. Sometimes they'll say, well, where do you live? And I just say, well, I don't actually live on the street. I'm not like a neighbor neighbor, but I own a bunch of properties in the area and I'm in the area once a week. We're basically neighbors and they never argue with that. Why would they? You're not selling them anything. You are here to help them. Who are you? I, it's probably my favorite question to overcome. Who are you? I'm Dave with Household Easy, and I got my eye on this neighborhood. I'm sorry to bother you, but I want to try to buy as many properties in this neighborhood as I can because I love it, and I invest here already, and I'm a neighbor. And then you just got to go build rapport. I love it, guys. I love it. I wish I could demo the caller a little bit more but I want to open up q and I don't want to just distract it. In fact, I'll do some more just live cold calling sessions with no teaching, just watching over my shoulder for 45 minutes to an hour. How about that? That way we're not having to try to go back and forth and do all of that. You guys can literally look over my shoulder and watch me go cold call 300 people. But while I got you all here, and again, anyone else here at real estate school um, that's watching the replay, 
you know, you guys have any questions? Do you have any, any, uh, anything that you want to talk about real quick before we wrap up? Kenneth, Nick, Don, Richard, we got a few people on the Zoom call today. You guys are good? It's good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Nick. Welcome, okay. man. Good. Sorry I was late. But it's okay. I, it's all recorded. Good. I'll be watching the replay like I always do. But anyway, awesome. my question was, when you have those, your dialer doing those three calls. Yep. And Pretty you, cool, huh? When you, when you, yeah. But when you get one and you get an answer, you know, somebody's answering the phone, what do the other ones just go on pause or how does that work? Yeah, great question. So you go in when you're setting up the system. Whenever you get an account, you're going to need to do two or three things. Number one, you're going to need to put in um, what number you want all the inbounds to come to, right? Number two, you're going to just, just configure it a little bit. Buy some numbers. You can get a free one for a week, I believe, in that free trial link, which I'll share here in school. But I will also share in the call replays and make a post in school. It's batchdialer.com forward slash Dave to get that free trial. Um, and then the third thing you're going to do, Nick, it's very simple to set it up. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to record the message. And I believe they refer to it as the callback message because they've answered and you're already on a phone. So if you're on five, six, seven dials, you're going to get a lot of people hearing that message. If you're only doing two or three at a time, it won't be as many, but it's still going to happen. The only way it's not going to happen is if you're only dialing one at a time because it's impossible at that rate, right? If you're dialing two or three or four and the first person answers, and I'm talking to Susan over here about her property on Maple Street, but Tim over here on Pine Street answers, they're going to hear a message. So go in and pre-record that. And here's what I have been, I've been testing this for seven years. The best thing that I have found is this. And here's why. I'm going to tell you why before I tell you the message. I've already told it to you, but I'm going to tell you again, right? Why? Because once I hang up with Susan over here on Maple Street, the dialer before it's going to go dial somebody new is going to say, hey, this guy just heard our message. We're going to call him next. So as soon as I hang up with Susan, it's going to call Tim. So the message that I want Tim to hear is this. It's so simple and dumb. It's so simple. Hey, this is Dave. I'm trying to. Uh, uh, hello? Hello? Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm having 